a lot of what we just saw is a result of duplication. So that's what we're going to primarily focus on in this video. Now to get started, let's bring in a Fusion Composition clip and we're going to take it directly to the Fusion page. Here, we're going to bring our text node first. Then let's uh, go ahead and write our text. We're also going to change the font of the text as well as the size. Just uh, bring that up a little bit. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to copy and paste this text node. And then we're going to come to this pasted text node. We're going to copy again. But instead of just pasting it, we're going to paste instance. And now let's uh, connect this instance node back to this other text node. And then uh, we're going to come to either one of these text nodes here. Then let's go to the shading tab and then change the text appearance from solid to text outline. Now, if we look at either one of those text nodes, we can see that the text is only showing up as outline. So now we are ready to create duplicates. And to do that, we're going to come to effect and drop the duplicate node after our first text node. Let's come to the duplicate node, change the copies to let's say five. And if we play with the Y axis of the center parameter, this, as you can see, it is going to give us that stacked text effect. And we can also play with the size parameter as well as the blend parameter to give us an interesting look. But for now, we're just going to stick with the center parameter. Okay, so let's uh, create a copy of the duplicate node and then paste instance. And then we're going to drop this instance duplicate node right after our instance text node. All right, let's come to the center parameter, right click, and then in the menu, select D instance. We're going to come back to the other duplicate node. And then with the playhead position at zero frame, we're going to keyframe the center parameter. Then let's come to the 60th frame. Let's uh, bring up the Y axis of the center parameter there. Uh, okay, so now let's uh, come back to the zero frame and then come to the other duplicate node. We're going to do pretty much the same thing, but this time we're going to bring down the Y axis of the center parameter to finish up the bottom portion. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is to bring up the spline editor, select both duplicate nodes, then select both the center parameters, and we're going to pretty much change their interpolations but we're going to make sure that they match each other so this way their movements are going to be in sync. Okay guys, at this point, we're pretty much done with the uh, animation and uh, this is not too bad, is it? Well, one other thing we can do here is to bring in a rectangle masking node. We are going to connect it to one of our foreground text nodes here. Then we can start to mask out certain parts of our text we can also maybe bring up the soft edge parameter a little bit there. Then let's do pretty much the same thing for the other text nodes. And this time, maybe we'll just mask out the top part of the text. And then uh, if we look at the overall effect, guys, you can see that this definitely will give it a slightly different look. Helps to uh, spice up the effect a little bit. One last thing I want to mention here is that our original text, as a result of us adding those additional foreground text nodes, is getting a little bit thicker as you can see. So what we can do in this case is to bring in a rectangle masking node connected to the merge node, then let's create a tight mask around the text and then hit invert. So this, as you can see, is going to help us avoid uh, those additional paddings on the text. Okay, so let's come back to the edit page. And uh, guys, this is pretty much it in terms of creating our first stack text effect. Okay, let's come back to the Fusion page. We're going to create another stack text effect, but let's uh, get rid of all these nodes first, except the original text node. And we're going to bring down the size a little bit there and uh, let's uh, copy and then paste it. And once again, a lot of the actions are gonna happen on the foreground node here. Okay, let's drop a duplicate node right after, and then we're going to come to the text node, uh, go to shading, change it to text outline, and then let's come to the duplicate node, change the copies to, I'm gonna say four, and then this time we're going to play with the X axis of the center parameter. This, as you can see, is going to move the text left and right instead of up and down. What we're gonna do next is to copy the duplicate node and then paste instance. Then we're going to connect it back to the original duplicate node. Now let's come to the instance node, go to the center parameter, right click, and then select the instance. And with the playhead position at the zero frame, we're gonna go to the original duplicate node, keyframe the center parameter, move to the 60th frame, and then move the X axis of the center parameter. 
Then we're going to do pretty much the same thing for the other duplicate node, except this time it's going to uh, be moving the text over to the left instead. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is to bring in another duplicate node, but we're going to drop it after the merge node. And in this duplicate node, we're going to change the copies to six. And then when we move the Y axis of the center parameter, this, as you can see, is going to create another set of duplicates, but they're going to be moving up and down instead of left and right. Okay, let's copy our duplicate node and then paste instance. And then we're going to connect the instance node back to the original duplicate node. And then let's go to this new uh, instance node. And then let's go to the center parameter, right click, and then in the menu, select the instance. Then let's go to the original duplicate node, go to zero frame, and then keyframe the center parameter. Now let's go to the 60th frame and then keyframe the center parameter again, but we're going to move the texts up. And then let's do the same thing for the other duplicate node, but this time we're going to be moving the texts downward instead. And the next thing we're going to do is to change the interpolations for all the keyframes in the duplicate nodes. So let's open up the spline editor, select the first set of duplicate nodes here, select the center parameters, and then change their interpolations. And then uh, afterwards, we're going to come to the other uh, set of duplicate nodes, uh, do pretty much the same thing, select the center parameters, then change their interpolations so that they match each other. And at this point, guys, in terms of the animation, we are pretty much there. There is just one last thing that we need to do before we wrap this up. Okay, so like what we saw previously, our original text here is still a little bit thicker than the original. So we are going to create a rectangle masking node uh, tightly around it. And then we're going to uh, hit invert. Uh, this, as you can see, is going to help us, uh, you know, get rid of some of that extra thickness. So if we come to the edit page, guys, as you can see, this is pretty much it for our second stack text effect. So on that note, uh, I hope this tutorial helps. As always, I will see you next time.